The weight of stars. I miss him. I imagine he misses me even more. It'll be years until I hear back and years until he hears me. And I'll be listening to a recording already years old while the real him is down on earth alone. I keep myself grounded with numbers. I send him how long he'll have to wait with each message. You'll hear from me again in six years. I love you. When I left, we were both 26. It felt surreal like a dream come true. To a distant star system. He never understood any of it, no matter how many times I laid out the diagrams or drew playful illustrations of where I was going. This is Starhaven, I said, and this is its moon Enceladus. There's evidence of life there. I explained intricate calculations for oxygen levels, potential plant growth, and microbial organisms, even before I dared to hope I might actually go. He never really supported it. He thought I wouldn't be chosen. He let me apply because he figured I'd never make it. And I did plan to stay behind with those odds. Stacking boxes in the shop, doing the financial work. The sound of him calling me from the back office. Can you help me with this? His laugh. You're the one with a head for numbers. Even when I applied, even when I trained, I never thought I would be the one they'd want to send up. I never thought I'd actually go. If I had a head for numbers, he had a heart for justice. Always knew where the products came from and how much the workers were paid. He managed all the purchases, all the marketing, all the thinking. I spent most of my time organizing, dreaming. Maybe he thought I didn't care about it, I loved it. A small shop in Seattle, a rescue turtle named Leo, and a guy with curly hair kept in a messy bun. The scent of paint lingering in the air. So you'll be younger than me? He said once, and I nodded, explaining the principles of special relativity and the intricacies of space-time, using charts that compared time dilation. I was filled with excitement, but he just stared at me, trying to process the information. I don't get it, he said, and I had to smile at his perplexity. How does it look like I'm traveling away from you? I'm not going anywhere. I knew what he wanted to say. I was glad he didn't say it. Do you know that we're traveling through the universe right now? At incredible speeds? We're moving too, we just feel like we're not because we live here. He looked up from his desk, brow furrowed in thought. Okay, then travel with me. And I did. He understood that nobody could keep me. Not my mother with her organic candles, not my friends in Seattle, and certainly not him. But we're not done with this planet, he would say often, even before I applied to leave. Our favorite argument. You're just going to abandon us? Make a new life up there because the one down here isn't working? We need you to help fix this place. Maybe he was right. Probably he was right. I used to sneak up behind him while he worked, whispering, you're busy right now? Hey, I could use your help right here. When the trash piled up. When it was time to feed Leo the turtle. Hey, I need you to help me right now. You're just leaving me here? Where are you going? Tickling him until he collapsed in laughter. Where are you going? When I left, I said the one rule was, don't argue with me and don't make me want to argue with you. I can't afford to think about fighting with you when I can't even hold you. I don't care if it's funny. I can't do it. I told him this and so far, he hasn't brought any of it up and I haven't either. Feels like a dream. You're a pawn, he said once, eyes ablaze with passion. Just another piece in the big game of corporate America. Like it hasn't been decades since we thought we won. He scoffed, his frustration spilling over. Imperialism never changes. Do you want any help? I asked and he told me no because I never knew how to clean up his office properly. The harder I tried, the worse I did. So I called him a diva. Does he remember my face? The full lips he said he loved. The way my dark skin glowed under the sunlight. I told him when I shaved my head to prepare for the mission. Space required simplicity. I wanted him to picture me right. It took him months to get the message, and I thought about how he imagined a me that didn't exist anymore. I want to remember him right. His long fingers and expressive eyes, the beanies he wore to keep his hair in check, 
I hope I remember his face even as it changes, and it's not my body aging. It's my mind learning how to survive in the vastness of space. I imagine he thinks I'm totally out of touch with him, lost in my calculations, and he's right. If I ever get back, I don't know how I'll reintegrate. I don't know how I'll comprehend life back on Earth knowing I was up here and he was down there struggling against everything. What can I do to help him? What can I do to fix the planet I used to live on? I told him before I left that if he met someone else I'd understand and he said, don't make me fight you right now. Sometimes I fall asleep to nightmares that they're ending the program. I wake up, drenched in sweat, unable to catch my breath, the cosmos outside my window too bright for sleep. I close my eyes and see it. We need to focus on our own issues down on Earth. We don't have the resources to bring you back. I understand this better than I do the reasons for sending me up. Every time I want to send him a message saying I wish I never left, I hold back. I wanted to explore but I never wanted to leave him. He's never been someone I needed to escape from. Don't you get it? I want it all, I want everything and I want the stars too. I want you in my arms when I step off the shuttle. I want my feet on the ground and I want my head in the stars. I won't leave you to fix the world on your own. I don't want to die, but I'm not afraid of it either. It's a reality I've gotten used to living with like a stray cat I've adopted up here. I would understand if everything changed. It's been long enough. I scratch out a million messages because I don't want him to think about it and I don't want to think about it either. I don't want to think about coming back and seeing him look different. I don't want to think about never coming back. I imagine interviews, people asking me what comes next. Will we claim this moon for our country? And what does that mean for the world? Is this the final frontier? Are we aliens? Is Earth becoming uninhabitable? Will we be the first to build a settlement on Enceladus? Sure, I'll say. For me and my husband. And we'll build our home in the ice and the warmth. And we'll bring our turtle up. And we'll live together whatever age we are and argue every day if we want to. We'll bring his beanies and my flannel shirts and enough snacks for the both of us, and I'll write a letter to my dad every morning. I'll break down the spaceship and we'll stay up here until we die, the first to live up here and the last. This moon will be our sanctuary, our land, our home and nobody else's. Ours and nobody else's, ours and no others. Me and my husband's. For me and my husband, 